guys so i hope you're all having a great weekend um hopefully not realizing too hard um so today i'm just going to quickly go over what to expect for papers two and three for the edxl series um so this is the gcse maths and this is for the higher tier so paper one has been my thoughts on the paper were that it was okay um there was some tricky questions don't get me wrong and i know some students find it very tricky i do think last year's paper was slightly better a um, bit of a nicer paper but try not to be too you know deterred try to think of these next two papers as a fresh start um, so don't worry too much about how your performance might have gone on paper one because papers two and three can easily pick up their marks for you so let's go through a list of topics which came up um, so I've tried to pick up some of the bigger topics that came up so for example thirds came up simultaneous equations came up with well, these these ones that came up were solving them uh, graphically, so we had two um, lines intersecting, that was your solution, and that's what that was. Um, so we've not had a question yet involving simultaneous equations where we have to solve it algebraically. We also had proof on the paper, we had completing the square and looking at the turning point. We had functions, so you had to find the inverse function, and I believe it was the composite functions for the second part. There was a direct and inverse proportion question that was uh, combined. And there was also the product rule. Um, so that was the question on the locks on the the pad, basically. So then with the topics that came up, um, I know there was a few others, but these were like the bigger ones. Um, you know, these are ones that you can almost guarantee will not come up again. So let's have a look at some topics that might come up. So what we can expect on papers two and three, we can definitely expect something to do with algebraic fractions. So make sure you know how to simplify algebraic fractions, add, subtract, multiply, and divide algebraic fractions. There's tons of worksheets online, guys, so make sure you check these out. Check out any videos on YouTube. There's tons of videos to help you with this. Pythagoras and trigonometry. And this includes 3D Pythagoras, guys. So don't, don't expect this to not come up. It does come up. So Pythagoras and trig. Now, I know there was a the little question involving the exact ratios, but we haven't seen anything um, trig-related yet in you know in detail so make sure you're comfortable with pythagoras make sure you're comfortable with trig it will come up circle theorems i was quite surprised that it wasn't on paper one it does often come up on paper one so make sure you know all the special rules for the circle theorems and if you can learn the proofs for the circle theorem so they are grade nine proofs um but if you're pushing for a grade eight or grade nine you have to know them they will bump that grade up Make sure you know the transformations for graphs when we use the y equals f of, uh, f of x notation. So make sure you know what the shifts do. Um, you know, so we have plus three, so it's f of x plus three. We're going to shift it to the left three, and so on. Uh, make sure you know all these special rules. Quadratic simultaneous equations. So we had simultaneous equations on the the first question, uh, the first paper, sorry, but we haven't had a quadratic one yet on these this exam series. So. That's when you've got, well, you know, one of the equations with an x squared, you know, and a y squared, or just an x squared, or just a y squared. Um, so we have to often use substitution to solve them. Um, so they are quite tricky. Again, the, the, towards the end, grade 8, grade 9. Um, so don't worry about them too much if you're only going for a grade 6 or a grade 7. Iteration. So again, iteration is another big topic. Um... And it's one of the new topics for this GCSE. It didn't used to be on the old spec. So edX, I love it. And they will, I can almost guarantee it. I'd, you know, I'd put money on it. It will be there. Recurring decimals. Just be confident with that. Cumulative frequency. Again, a nice question. Make sure you're confident with that. What we can also expect, quadratic formula. So, in, you know, question involving the quadratic formula. Make sure you can remember it, guys. They don't give it you anymore. You have to learn it. Quadratic inequalities. So this is a new one to the spec again, so I could almost guarantee it will be on. Um, what, as a general rule of thumb, for the new topics on the exam series, if it's one of the new topics, Edexcel are more than likely going to put it on. They really like the new topics, um, so be ready for, ready for them. Vectors, so this includes the proof of vectors, you know, for certain graphs and stuff that you might be given, uh, or a triangle, for example. You might be asked to prove a certain point is half of another point. Uh, stuff like that make sure you can do them make sure you know how to add and multiply um column vectors sounds silly it's you know it's only a grade five topic but make sure you can do that and other than that the vectors aren't too bad some they can have some trickier questions but there is tons of examples for vectors on the old spec as well so check them out velocity time graphs now this is a new one it's not super common it's probably the only one that excel don't put on every year um or are unlikely to 
if you're aiming for a grade nine, I would learn it. If you're not aiming for a grade nine, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but it can come up and I don't often see it, you know, being recommended. So make sure if you're really aiming for that grade nine, make sure you learn it. Perpendicular line, so make sure you know, you know, how do we work out the perpendicular gradient? Can you work out an equation of a line that's going through a perp you know, for a perpendicular line? Stuff like that. Make sure you can do it. Histograms is another one. Trig and exponential graphs. So make sure you know how to plot the sine and cosine and tan graphs. Um, you know, it sounds silly, but you have to be able to do these these are key skills, especially if you're going on to do A level maths. This is a really essential skill. Exponential graphs. I don't see it come up too often, but you can sometimes get the question involving three points. Um, I'll actually leave a link in the description, guys, if you want to see what these sort of graphs look like and how you can plot them as such. I'll leave a link in the description. We also haven't seen the sine and cosine rule yet. Um, and again, you're going to have to learn these formulas. They aren't given to you. And then finally, what I'm going to finish with is quadratic and geometric sequences. So quadratic sequences is new and geometric sequences is also new. Now, the quadratic sequences are a lot more likely to come up than the geometric sequences. I could almost guarantee quadratic could come up. Geometric is unlikely, but I'm putting it on there anyway. It did come up on the November 2017 paper. So if you want to see what that looks like, make sure to check that out. It was a very tricky question. Now, the geometric sequence questions are basically A-level maths questions, or they border on that. Um, so they are, you know... If it's going to be on there, it's going to be very tricky, I won't lie. Um, whereas the quadratic sequences are, generally speaking, quite nice. Definitely learn quadratic sequences, geometric sequences. If you have chance, have a look over them. Check out some tutorials on YouTube and see if you can find past paper questions. I will link some in the description below as well, guys, so be sure to check that out. So overall, them are just the, the key topics that I would recommend learning. Try not to stress too much. You've still got a good chunk of time now until the next exam. For higher students, make sure you're doing past papers. It's the key um, to unlocking them higher grades. You need to be doing consistent practice, so you know practicing regularly. Make sure you know, for example, all the topics if you can, but at least a good 80, 90% of them. You know, if there's just a few that you have to leave, that's fine. But you need to be, you know, learning as many topics as you can, especially if you're aiming for the higher grade. So at grade seven to nine, you need to know all the topics. Now. Paper one, like I said, was a bit of a trickier one, but and what I'm expecting is what one of these next papers, so one of the calc papers will be quite nice, with the other one being a bit trickier again. So make sure you're revising, guys. You've still got a good amount of time now, so use your revision time efficiently. Check out loads of tutorials on YouTube, work through the papers, keep asking your teachers at school, and you know, if you've got any tutorials that you'd like me to cover, please just leave a comment, guys, and I'll be happy to go through them for you.